United Kingdom, Scotland. Oh, went there too. Oh, amazing. I could spend like a whole month there. I just started the recording. Thank you. All right. Well, I am going to um, share my screen. And I do want to say, guys, feel free to, um, we'll have um, Ginger, who is my colleague here at Read Speaker, will be monitoring the chat. If you've got questions, feel free to throw questions in at any time. We want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, again, hear from your peers. Um, learn from them. It's not meant to be a salesy kind of um, presentation. So I'm just really excited that you're all here. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And just remember, we're all human. I'm going to have animals floating around and doing whatever. Um, so if we have some um, fun stuff going on, that just makes it more memorable. All right. Can I get a thumbs up if you can see my screen from my panelists? Awesome. Okay. So you're here to hear about addressing accessibility in course design and practice. And again, it's a round table discussion. It's supposed to be interactive. Um, again, featuring Quality Matters and Read Speaker. So first I'll start with myself. I'm Kathy Wood. I am the Education Partner Manager here at Read Speaker. What does that mean? It just means that I work with our partners in the education space whether that means the LMS um, contacts, whether that means Jim at Quality Matters, just working with our different partners in that space to help make sure that um, our relationships are growing, that the, the integrations are what they need to be. Um, and so that's really my main function here at Read Speaker. Jim, would you like to introduce yourself and your role at Quality Matters? Yes, hello, I'm Jim Snyder. I'm the Director of Community Engagement and Marketing. And much like uh, Kathy on her side, uh, I really work with all of our members, potential members, as well as any organizations that we collaborate with. Um, that's really that's really my, my role. I've been with Quality Matters for about eight years now. So I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to be part of the panel. Great. And you'll hear a little bit more about um, Quality Matters and Read Speaker just kind of as a, as a high level quick overview so that you, if you're not familiar, um, you'll get a little bit of taste of that. But really, we want our main focus to really be on our guest panelist, which um, Beatrice, I would like for you, if you don't mind, to go ahead and start and give us just a quick introduction, what you do at Laredo College, uh, just a little bit of bio. You can throw in a fun fact if you want to. This Just take the floor. Hello, everybody. My name is Beatriz Flores Martinez, and I'm an instructional design specialist here at Laredo College. Um, what do we do here? We do everything that has to do with e-learning from looking for the technology, researching technology, evaluating technology that's gonna be implemented to designing courses um, for our online platform. Um, we are the ones that oversee the LMS um, here at our campus. We use Canvas um, as our LMS. And um, so basically anything that has to do with online learning, that's what we focus on. I've been with e-learning for about four years already. I've been with Laredo College for about 12, 13 years already. And so um, what I love about e-learning and what I do is that every day I'm learning something new. And so I hope you all enjoy the round table discussion that we're gonna have today. And um, something interesting or important fact is that my master's degree, I actually, did it 100% online. Um, and of course, I enjoyed all the technology that was involved with it. Um, so yeah, our team here at Laredo College is constantly looking for innovative to technology to implement into our online courses. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Beatrice. Candace, I'm gonna hand that over to you now if you'll introduce yourself and your role and anything you wanna add. Thank you so much. Yes, um, my name is Candace McPherson. I'm the Director of Design and Development for Virtual Arkansas. We are classified as a state virtual program. Um, and we're not actually a school. We don't grant diplomas. We're supplement to the public schools. We serve grades 7 through 12. 
And that's in partnership with our state Department of Ed, the education service co-ops and the public schools. And mm -hmm. we've primarily been tasked with um, mitigating the teacher shortage over these last several years, especially in rural districts, as mm -hmm. well as helping them expand course offerings to their students where options are slim. Um, of course, the pandemic has brought on you know, new roles for us as we support our state. I love this work. Uh, in my role, I deal with everything digital content. So my team from creation to maintenance to implementation, that's what we focus on. Uh, like Beatrice, we're in Canvas. Uh, we love being in that LMS. We've been in several before that. And so um, we were able to merge together into this one. Um, a fun fact is that I haven't always been considered a techie person or into the digital scene. Um, in fact, it wasn't until I got married and my husband forced me off the 200 texts a month plan that I actually got an iPhone and, and got up to speed with everything. But I, I entered my master's program in instructional technology because I was curious and I didn't want to be afraid of it anymore. And I fell in love with it. And so that's, that's where I am now. That's awesome, Candace. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I, I think that a lot of, especially K through 12 um, faculty would probably consider themselves non-techie when it comes to certain things. And I think, um, you know, when we think about technology for both K-12 and higher ed, you always want to think about something that's easy to use and implement. So again, I totally get it. My husband is K-12, um, has been for 27 years. I always have to do a lot of things for him. I get it. <laughs> All right, Jim, I'm gonna pass it back to you. Let's talk about Quality Matters. All right, thank, thanks, Kathy. Just a, just a quick little overview of Quality Matters. If, uh, if you don't uh, know who we are, Quality Matters is a global organization leading quality assurance in online and innovative digital teaching and learning environments. It provides a scalable quality assurance system for online and blended learning used within and across organizations. When you see the QM certification marks on courses or programs, it means they've met QM course design standards or QM program review criteria in a rigorous review process. A little bit more about Quality Matters, there are over 1,500 institutional members in over 30 countries. Most of them are here in the, in the US, but we do have some, I saw Canada and Puerto Rico um, listed there as well. Uh, we're used by higher ed, K-12, and other organizations offering continuing educational and professional development. It's a scalable process led by credentialed reviewers that's based on feedback and continuous improvement. And QM certified courses are recognized as quality courses at the international level. Uh, next slide. And just because we're gonna be talking about uh, a lot of different uh, areas around accessibility, I thought I would uh, include some free resources available at the Quality Matters website. Uh, either Grace or I will put these links in the chat uh, in, a, in a minute, um, but we do have, just like the one we're doing today with, with ReadSpeaker, we have um, these free, free webinars that, uh, that we put on every so often uh, with other uh, collaborators around uh, pieces of information that are important to, uh, to our audience members. Uh, when we're specifically talking about accessibility and usability like we are in this, uh, in this webinar, we have, it's based in Canvas, so that be familiar with most people, our accessibility and usability resource site. It's free and uh, open, open to everyone. Thanks, Grace, for putting in the link. Uh, additionally, during the pandemic, we did publish what we call our Bridge to Quality online course design guides. Uh, we, we did a higher ed version as well as a K-12 K version, and it was really to act as a bridge from emergency remote instruction uh, that, uh, that was going on right at the start of the pandemic over to looking at quality online course design. And this was the, this document is available for everyone to um, help you go from 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 uh, the emergency remote over to uh, quality online course design. And then additionally, we'll be talking a little bit about research. 
uh, quality matters is deep into research and we have a research library that has over uh, 1000 peer reviewed curated articles. Um, they are arranged by the different standards. So standard eight is our one that addresses accessibility. So if you're curious on what's going on with the latest research, you can go out there and check out uh, the Quality Matters Research Library. Quality Matters does offer a lot of professional development and I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the one that really addresses accessibility and usability, which is titled ironically, the Addressing Accessibility and Usability Standard 8. So that is um, a two week long uh, workshop that you can go to uh, looks at addressing accessibility and usability. And then lastly, we're pretty excited that we are, I, think, I know there was a question if, this, if uh, the conference is actually going to be face-to-face -face this year uh, in November, it's going to be in Tucson, Arizona from November 6th to the 9th. Uh, so that's a little bit about Quality Matters. Thanks, Jim. And again, everyone, we've got some people moderating the chat and the Q&A. So if you've got questions or whatever, throw it in there, um, you know, uh, and and we can, you know, stop at any time and address some of the questions that can't be addressed just in the chat. So again, throw them out there. So Read Speaker, if you're not familiar with Read Speaker, again, not going to you know be a salesy pitch or whatever i just want to tell you a little bit about it we are a text-to-speech solution but we also provide accessibility tools with certified lms integrations and again you can kind of see um, a lot of the logos down there um, and again we are always continually working on improving our lms integrations so that they continue to be easy to use and easy to implement this is a um, actual picture of our um, upgraded web reader player. And it kind of just shows you the different um, options in our web reading tool. So you've got things like um, enlarged text, page maps, and it literally is just easy as clicking the listen button. Um, we have a dictionary function, we have a translate function, and we are used by over 1500 institutions globally. And we have our own internal linguistics team. And why is that important to uh, mention is because when we think about customization, when we think about even acronyms at your institution, say you are at Kennesaw State University, KSU, every time you see Kennesaw State University or KSU on a website and you wanted something to be read out, Kennesaw State University, we can on the fly make those changes. Um, male voices, female voices, British voices, whatever. Um, when we think about focus tools and that sort of thing, just changing a voice from male to female or from American English to um, British, um, it can help a student or learner um, engage a little bit more. So my boss, Paul Sisser, showed me these cartoons. Um, couple weeks ago and I used them in another um, webinar and I and I'm sorry I'm gonna if you're in another webinar with me I'm probably gonna use them again because I think that they are so to the point so when we think about our students we know that our learners do not all learn the same um, and so you know on the left you see you know the gentleman basically saying you know everybody needs to climb that tree well we're not all equipped to climb that tree and over on the right you're going to see you know, the gentleman in the wheelchair basically saying, well, if you would just shovel the ramp, we could all go in, not just doing the stairs first and then the ramp. So it's really just these small cartoons are really eye opening about how we address our learners and address that accessibility for our learners. And how does that tie in with universal design for learning? Well, when you think about it, if you approach that as a universal universal tool, it's based on those scientific insights, yes, but it's about providing those equal opportunities, but still can be customized for those individual needs. So kind of be thinking about that. Now, is Read Speaker available just for disability services? Yes, if that's what you want to do. If you just want a subset of your students that maybe have 504s, plans or IEPs, or if you just want to service your disability service office, yes, 
But we also like to think about these tools can help all students, not just those that are identified as needing accommodations. So let me try to move my little toggle screen because Beatrice had a great idea when we started talking about this webinar. As again, we are a text-to-speech company. So we're going to have three discussion questions. And again, this is not limiting to your questions that you may have as an audience, but this is to kind of help start the conversation. So you're going to hear one of our voices read this question. Tell us how your institution came to utilizing Quality Matters and Read Speaker. So Beatrice, I'm going to let you take the floor first. And then Candace, I would like for you to follow up and just kind of address this question of how y'all came to utilize Read Speaker and Quality Matters. Thank you so much. So first I'll address how we came to utilize Quality Matters in 2004. 14 here at Laredo College, um, we started, uh, we became part of, a, um, I'm sorry, um, so here in 2014, Laredo College joined Quality Matters. In fact, the first um, participant to complete the APP QMR is, was our dean, um, is our dean, Dr. Rodriguez, and um, our first course that was um, QM certified here at Laredo College was in 2015. And so from there on, we've gone to certified over 111 courses. And so that's how we started off with QM. QM really works here at, at our institution. Uh, how we came to come in contact with Read Speaker, how we became, um, how we came to utilize Read Speaker. In 2018, Laredo College came up with a strategic plan, which is learner-centered, life-changing, and a leadership catalyst. And so in that plan, um, our team was tasked to look for accessibility tools that would integrate into our LMS. And like I mentioned, our LMS is Canvas. And what this tool was going to provide for all our learners um, was for us to be able um, to to give them that capability, like from the cartoon, um, to give them that capability to learn online. And so our, our interest was for our online learners, but in reality, ReadSpeaker is for all learners. Even our professional staff love using ReadSpeaker. Um, and so in 2018, um, when we were tasked with coming to um, to looking for an, a tool that was going to help our students. Um, our current director, Ali, she actually came into contact with Paul Stisser um, from Read Speaker, and um, they met at, they first emailed each other, and then they met at InstructureCon, and then I got to meet um, Paul, or I got to visit their table, <laughs> um, Read Speaker table, at the QM Connect conference. Why do I mention this? We encourage all professional staff when you attend the conference, visit the vendor tables. Why? Because they just offer so much technology, so much innovation that you can come back home, back to your institution and implement. And so we're always looking for innovative tools. We're always evaluating tools. And so Ali came back. Um, she introduced us to Read Speaker, and then we loved it. It was approved by, by um, it, it went through the process and it was approved, and now it's been implemented here at our institution. And so we hear from our counselors who are our number one advocators, our special services. They're the ones that are always telling their students, you've got to use Read Speaker. And so that's how we came into using Read Speaker. How does it tie back? Well, Quality Matters in 2018 also included accessibility as an essential standard, 8.3. And so makes um, this, this one essential standard, if it is not met, the course does not make. So it's a make or break. And it's only fair to our students, right? Um, 
every student deserves the capability to be able to learn and become independent as an online learner. So that's how we came into contact or utilizing Quality Matters and Read Speaker. And Candace, before you start, you made a good point, Beatrice, too, because that also comes into accessibility audits. And, um, you know, a lot of um, when everybody had to pivot to online learning that weren't really prepared to have so many mass classes online, did you just check a box to check to say that you were providing something accessible or did you really, you know, uh, learn to know what, what your students needed and was that tool or solution fitting those needs? So, um, you know, we, we wanna make sure like Jim talks about in Quality Matters that, you know, good design, you know, it, it's all, you know, when, when you think about accessibility, you have to first start with that good design and then you've got to implement the tools that are going to carry you through. So Candace, your turn. Okay, well, as far as QM goes, it was around five years ago that our executive director was looking for a program to evaluate us and help us grow in quality. Because we're a supplemental program, some of the traditional accreditation evaluation programs didn't really fit the model of what we did to correctly assess. And when he stumbled across QM, quickly he saw this this is what we need and so he tasked us with incorporating quality matters into our departments and for design and development it was an incredibly timely relationship because we were actively working on improving course quality and having those conversations with our teachers um, and we wanted a systematic approach and QM had a lot of that process and work already done and have been a huge ally from a design standpoint. Um, not too long after that, we started using Read Speaker as well. And prior to Canvas, we were on Blackboard and Moodle, self-hosted -host Moodle. We had courses in both places. Read Speaker worked pretty seamlessly across both of those. And then when we moved our content over to Canvas, continued to work fine. That wasn't a big shift for us. Um, it has really, played a huge role in, in our accessibility piece and just providing that option for students, whether they have formal documentation or not, there are so many K-12 students out there that benefit from this. We have situations where you know, students are below grade level in their reading abilities. You know, they can read, but they get into that physics class and it's not, it's not as straightforward if they have um, a reading deficit. So being able to play that aloud and listen to the words is incredibly helpful. And you mentioned that kind of bimodal way of learning. And, and when we talked um, to another one of our virtual school um, um, at ePasco schools in Florida, um, Joanne Glenn, she actually, you know, made, you know, was talking about the distinction between reading to learn and learning to read. And so, you know, when you think about audio helping with that, you also have to think about your English, English as a second language. You've got to think about, um, again, your struggling readers. When you're talking about being in a virtual environment, sometimes it's very hard to um, have that um, extra connection um, to help those students as you would if they were sitting right beside you. So um, those are all very valid points. I did, before we move on to the next question, we did have a question, um, Candice and Beatrice, if you don't mind saying where you got your instructional design masters. Mine was from the University of Central Arkansas. Um, mine was from Texas A&M Commerce. Great. All right, we'll move on to our next question. Tell us how your institute. Who do you think benefits from using Quality Matters and Read Speaker? Candace, if you would like to start first. Um, on this one, I would say without a doubt, every single stakeholder. Um, I would say first and foremost, it's the students because they're the ones that need to learn and access the content well, but you know, it benefits our teacher through Quality Matters, better program overall, 
Um, our teachers have given us lots of feedback and they regularly use QM to have conversations with us about things they wanna do to improve their course. Um, one teacher shared with me that it really helped them understand accessibility and resolve those issues throughout their course content. And I would say that when students and teachers, when those two stakeholders are having a good experience, it benefits the parents and the administrators. That's what everybody wants. And so I really feel like Quality Matters helps us give a better experience to students. And then of course, Read Speaker really meets some of those complex needs that students have. Um, I would say that almost every year we have scenarios where we have a student transfer in who does not speak English. There's not an ELL plan in place yet, they're working on it, but immediately that teacher can show that student how to use the language tools in ReadSpeaker and they can start accessing that material. And um, our teachers definitely love it for that fact. Another example, just last week, a physical science student enrolled who had dyslexia and her facilitator was able to immediately show her how to use those online text readings. Um, and so it just, it's a, it's a smooth and helpful tool for all of our stakeholders. The word that comes to mind when you were talking is empower. Quality Matters empowers the teachers and those stakeholders to provide, like you said, provide the content in, in, in a good way. And ReadSpeaker is empowering those students to feel like they have a way to be successful utilizing that. Beatrice? I agree with Candice. Everybody, all participants, all learners, everybody benefits from using Quality Matters. Um, and yes, in particular, our students. I remember when I worked at the Learning Center, um, I had a student who could only read in black and yellow. And so this was a face-to-face -face student. He had to come to campus. We literally had to put the projector, the learning center equips our students with all the tools, tools necessary. But the thing is they had to come to campus. At the end, the student is very appreciative, but they feel a sense of owing something to somebody. How does Read Speaker resolve this feeling? We know through emotional intelligence, right? Um, there's different ways of learning. Learning. We have different learning styles. Some students learn by visual, um, auditory, kinesthetic. And so this, had this tool been at our institution earlier, maybe our student would have preferred to be an online student. Um, so what Read Speaker does, it gives that, it, it gives the students the independence, enrichment, um, tools that they can actually succeed in the classroom. Uh, with the pandemic, <laughs> there, these tools came into play even more effective. Why? Because our students no, were no longer able to come to campus. And so those students that depended on these tools, uh, we had to provide them a way out. Thankfully, our team was prepared. And like I said, we started implementing, we came to contact with Read Speaker in 2018. So when the pandemic hits, all our learners have the capability to have that extra pair of ears, that extra pair of eyes to be able to learn. Taking notes is something very intimate to one. That's how we are able to learn. And so, we are appreciative to our readers that come to campus and read for our students that help take notes in the classroom, but we focus on online learning. And so having the capability for our student to have that option to stay at home um, with the pandemic to be safe, <laughs> they don't um, have to worry about, con um, they don't have to worry about um, getting or receiving the disease, um, the virus, sorry, COVID. And so having these tools really build that enrichment. Um, I, 
I know you mentioned that was it just like a checkbox, like, oh, we're meeting accessibility. No, it's not just a checkbox to us. Our institution focuses on learner success, but we also focus on how our students are gaining that learner success. So we wanna enrich our students. We want them to become independent. We want them to be successful. And so that's what we do here at Laredo College. It's, we want them to have a life-changing experience, a learning experience. And so Read Speaker gives that independence to all learners, in particularly our online learners. Um, so yeah, everybody benefits. Our students benefit, our faculty benefits, um, even our professional staff here on campus who use Canvas. Sometimes, you know, even me when I'm doing research, um, I can spend in, uh, all this time in front of the computer, right? Reading, 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 and we get screen fatigue. We get Zoom fatigue from all our meetings on Zoom. Um, and so just to have that capability to press play <laughs> and it's reading to you, it becomes music to your ears. You know, these, these tools build that independence. And so we want our students to feel that enrichment, that empowerment, that they were able to gain their education um, with their, cap with yes, we have these capabilities, but they don't have that sense of owing to somebody else. And those are good points. And you think about too, when you think about higher education, we're not just talking about what we used to consider the traditional student, you know, the 18 to 22. Uh, my sister has gone back to nursing school. Um, and so she is overwhelmed with all the reading. And so I introduced her to, to read speaker. And so she can literally multitask while, you know, she, you know, listening to it on her phone, um, you know, while she's doing something else, you know, if she's got to take her daughter to dance, she can sit in the van and just listen and, and absorb it in a different way. Just like you said, to break up that screen fatigue or that monotony of, of you know, being focused on the screen all day. So that those are very good points. Um, I'm going to pause can just I... for a second. Yeah, I'm going to pause just for a second. Do we have any questions that we need to address before we move on to the last discussion question? There, there were a couple of yeah. questions I wanted to speak to, uh, if possible. One was about um, my institution has read speaker. How do I, as an admin, help everyone use it to its full potential? And so I would say in our case, it did take a couple years to really get it going and used by our folks widespread. Um, but part of that was just training uh, in our orientation videos and materials for students, we have a section on read speaker where they actually practice with it. And the second piece kind of answers a question in the chat that said, um, how does it impact maintenance and revision of an online course? Um, Technology wise, it's pretty seamless. There's not much of an impact at all, but design wise, it's really helpful to our instructors um, we created a simulation for them where they have to use read speaker. We took um, like a designed page of instructional text. It's on a white background. We turned the text white so that they couldn't see it. And we required them to use read speaker to interpret the page and reflect on their experience. And that really changed the way they chose to design their pages. So I would say it had a very positive influence on the, the instructors. And also, Candace, as you mentioned, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, learning, we also provide free support um, for the life of your license. So if you want to gather some colleagues together and do an office hour uh, for that training, that's included. It's, we don't nickel and dime that kind of stuff. We want you to, to utilize it as much as possible. Um, and so those, those benefits are always out there. Ginger, who is monitoring our, our Q&A um, for Read Speaker, she's our implementation guru. And so she, she does a lot of those um, training and, and um, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. So those are always available. All you have to do is just say, hey, our team would love um, a one-on-one -on -one, um, demo or a one-on-one -on -one, uh, training session, and those are available. Ginger, I think Actually, you had, we do, yeah. We do have several questions that are along the same line. 
how is Read Speaker different from Immersive Reader in Canvas? And to answer that question, Immersive Reader in Canvas is only in specific places. It is not throughout the entire platform. Read Speaker will read the entire platform, and we also provide data so that you can see what you are looking at, not, you know, who's used not the who, but how much usage you are having. So you can look at that. And that clears up quite a number of the questions over here in the Q&A. Um, we also have some questions about, and our panelists can answer this, how satisfied higher ed students are with this product? Would y'all like to take that one? Beatrice, since you're a higher ed guru. <laughs> I believe they are. In fact, um, before this presentation, I had a conversation with our special services counselor, Mary Sosa, and she was telling me that she always, always refers students, recommends students to use all our tools, but the one tool that she recommends is Read Speaker. And so um, the feedback is that students love it. It helped them. Um, like I said, become independent. It's helped them enrich um, their learning capabilities. And so our students are really appreciative of all the tools that we have for them. Um, and so when they come back and say, thank you, that just means a lot. <laughs> it helps us um, also feel that satisfaction that we are providing our students what they need. And trust me here at Laredo College, when a student needs something, they do voice out their opinions and we hear them loud and clear. And anytime that um, feedback comes back to us, we always take it to heart to make sure that we work twice as hard, you know, to give a response that will satisfy their their um, their learning capabilities. So yes, our students are highly satisfied with the tools that we have available for them, and particularly, in particular, Read Speaker. And also to follow up on that, if you um, we also offer free sandboxes. So if you want to, if you're a D2L user, a Blackboard user, Moodle user, Canvas user. We do offer free sandboxes that you can actually see it in your environment with your content. Um, and so I think that that's also something important to um, to acknowledge because, uh, you know, you want to know what you're getting into. You want to see it with your own material. Um, and so that is available to you. Let's go ahead and jump to our last um, discussion question um, and then we can um, answer a few more. Who do you what differentiates Quality Matters and Read Speaker from others? And again, we kind of touched on this a little bit. And, you know, um, Beatrice Candace, I don't know if you've used any other text to speech products before or if you've got any, um, you know, background, you know, staff members using it, students using it. But if you would like to um, address this, Beatrice, if you would like to go ahead and start. Yes, um, like I mentioned at the Learning Center, we have the DRAWS program and we have the scanners. But again, students have to come and use those um, tools. As far as technology, um, we do have other technology tools that we've used, but um, Read Speaker has been the one that, um, that we've kept. Once um, Read Speaker um, and Rito College um, made that collaboration, um, we've stuck together. <laughs> and so, because it, it really does work here at our institution, um, not to mention recently Read Speaker, uh, I was looking at the news um, and um, in 2021, you guys won the Speech Industry Award. So that's something, you know, that we can tell our students, you know, we are not just offering you any product. We're offering you the best product in the industry. And so what differentiates is that um, these tools give us the capability to provide our students the capability to learn. Um, what differentiates quality matters um, from others? We've 
I want to say we've only used quality matters here at our institution for online certification. Um, but what we like about quality matters is that it um, it helps us have in mind, you know, um, these are best practices that we have in mind when designing our courses. We, we know that quality matters works and it's working here at our institution. Um, it's, it's been, uh, we've gone through as a team through professional development, we've tested out different course designs over the years. And so the more that, that we've used quality matters, it really does improve our courses. And that's what quality matters is all about. It's about improvement. They don't expect perfect perfection from us. Although I will say several of our courses have come back perfect with a perfect score of 100. Um, but yeah, um, quality matters is helping us. It's, um, you know, online learning is here to stay. <laughs> And if anything, it's a growing industry. It's growing here at Laredo College, even when our students have had the option to come back to face-to-face -face learning, they keep selecting online learning. And so online and hybrid learning, I should say. Um, so, so I feel that as an institution, we've partnered with great, um, great, industry, the best in the industry, I should say. So we have quality manners and we have read speaker. Um, so yeah, as far as how it read speaker differentiates one more time, we were depending on these physical tools. And now with, with read speaker, we can provide the tools needed for our students to be an independent online learner. Candace. All right. So, um, we're very selective about the vendors we get because we have to be financially. I mean, a lot of people are in that boat, but a primary goal we have is to support equity in Arkansas among uh, students. And so when we purchase something, we want, to, we want to keep our program affordable. So we want to make sure that return on investment is worth it for the students. And um, we really like to partner with people who demonstrate that students come first. And I can say for both QM and Read Speaker, we get that sense when we interact with them, when we need support, when we need help. And just in, in their innovation itself, it's like they're constantly evolving to make sure the students having the type of experience they need to have. And that's huge for us. Um, as far as Read Speaker, Another thing we like about it is it's so device agnostic and interoperable. And we have another platform we use for our lesson, interactive lesson content called CourseArc. They are really high into accessibility. They will, like when you input, um, I know someone mentioned Articulate and some other programs for that, but when you input like a drag and drop, it automatically takes those data fields and turns it into an alternative assignment style for a student that might not be able to manipulate a, a drag and drop. So as soon as we invested in them, you know, we wanted to make sure ReadSpeaker would work on their platform. And I don't know if they had already been talking or, or didn't know each other yet, but ReadSpeaker and CourseArt got together and made it happen. And so I see ReadSpeaker as very interoperable and working toward that. Um, there are many other screen readers out there. We work for the, uh, along with the School for the Deaf and the School for the Blind in our state. They have their own equipment. And this is just kind of like the broad first step for everybody. It kind of encompasses all needs. Uh, we don't exclude other options, but we know that we can fall back on ReadSpeaker as a simple first step for individuals needing more accessibility. And you know, you you also made a good point when you think about you see Beatrice, you mentioned Paul Sisser, our director of business development. You see me. Y'all worked with Ginger. We are real people, just like Jim is a real person with quality matters. And so when you're dealing with, you know, quality matters and read speaker, you're dealing with, you know, a company, companies that have a lot more control over. 
um, the the design and the and the flow and the implementations and and changes. Just like I said, we have our own internal linguistics team, so customizations are quickly done, and we are constantly. We have our um, LMS um, advisory boards that we meet with monthly. Um, we have people from each LMS um, peers that are telling us this is what we need. This is what you know we would love to see changed, and we're taking that and we are running with it. And you know we won't settle for anything but the best user experience. And so when we're working right now, um, trying to um, get our Blackboard Ultra integration to be the best it can be, we're not going to settle for something that's not going to be what people are used to um, used to using because that's that's not fair for the user experience. So we are actively working on these things and we take those that feedback um, very seriously. And Jim, I don't know if you wanted to, you know, say that from the uh, quality matters perspective or not, but that's for read speaker. That's the way we see it. Yeah, I'm Kathy. Oh, go ahead, Ginger. Kathy, Kathy, we have a couple of questions here, and it regards to review key features, including personalized settings, larger text, page mask tool, and presentation in text mode. Are we able to do any type of live demo here, or do our presenters want to, panelists want to handle that? Well, let me let Jim finish what he was going to say, and then we can, because this, that was our last discussion question. So let me let Jim address this last one, and then we can, we can go from there. I mean, the, the, yeah, the, thanks. I mean, I'll be quick, and then we can jump to that. <clears throat> that would be fine. Uh, one of, I, I also facilitate one of the courses that Quality Matters offers to, to our members and non-members, the Introduction to Quality Matters, and in that two-week-long asynchronous course, like all of our, our uh, quality matters, professional development offerings, we integrate Read Speaker into, into, into that. And this is mostly taken by K-12 uh, K twelve faculty and higher ed faculty. And I think where they really like to see it is, I mean, there's sometimes I'm getting comments that this is the first online course that they are taking as a student. And so the ability for faculty to, to faculty at, at any level to, sit in the shoes of their students and see what it's like to go through uh, an online course and some of the tools that, that are in those online courses, like Read Speaker, really helps for them to figure out, okay, what's the best way to um, present my material as well as uh, consume that material. So that's where we see uh, a lot. That's what, that's what we put, you know, that's why Read Speaker is in our, in our, uh, in our professional development so that it is you know meeting our our standards that we that we put together so that's that's where i'll stop there but if we want to do uh if, if you have an opportunity to do some what? some memo that demos that'd be great yeah and i just put this slide in here to just to you know assistive technology again and you can read this help students stay at peer level improves comprehension motivation self-esteem um, you know, and again, audio, that bimodal way of learning, and I always like to also point out, you know, when we, uh, Abraham Lincoln also said this, um, uh, it was documented that he said that, you know, hearing something helps him learn it better first. You read it, then you hear it, and you actually absorb it um, better. So, you know, it, it again, I think um, I'm a visual learner. My husband hates it. Um, because I'll say, well, show, show me what you're talking about <laughs> because he's trying to explain something to me. Well, it's going to be like this and I'm like, I got, I've got to see it. So we all learn differently. And I think that, you know, again, just, just embracing that and, um, acknowledging that and finding ways that we can help our learners is just, it's imperative. Um, I'm going to just leave this slide up, um, just while we, um, throw out some questions and Ginger, was the question that somebody would like to see something demoed or I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch part of it. They wanted to be certain that we did the objective of showing it. So yes, I would say it is a demo. 
sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. So um, I, I'll fur, I'm not going to put Candace Beatrice on the, on the spot unless you want to, but Ginger, would you like to share your screen on one of the LMSs and show it or show it on Quality Matters? Um, I will be glad to. Um, I'm pulling up Brightspace right now. So if you'll just give me one moment, I will be where I need to be. Okay. And then I will share my screen. Perfect. Are there any other questions that we can uh, answer? While Jim, we're you do have a few questions at the top in the Q&A about certificates and rubrics. So if you could handle those while I'm getting ready to share this. We'll, we'll do. Yeah, and they're in the Q&A. And Kathy, please let me know when you can see my screen. I can see it. You'll need to okay. lower your, your Q&A though, Ginger. Or cancel out of the Q&A box. Oh, there we go. Are you not seeing Harry Potter? I can see it. You can see it now? Yes. Do you see it? Yes, just make sure that you've shared your audio as well when you click shared screen. I did. Okay, with the various tools that we're being asked about, give it just a second to load here. We do have various reading languages where you can choose which voice that you want. Some of the tools that were mentioned were in large text. So I'm gonna turn that on. And I will just play one sentence since I am on satellite internet, which takes a lot of bandwidth. J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series of books. J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series of books. Okay, I apologize. I didn't have it rolled up enough, so I'm going to replay it. J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series of books. With the enlarged text, you can keep pumping it up larger than that. Um, I'll do it one more time, and I'm going to pause it. J.K. Rowling wrote and the And you can see that it does go up quite large. I'm accustomed to doing this on my bigger screen, so I apologize. Hitting stop here does not stop the enlarged text. You do have to toggle it off. Settings, you personalize that. Personally, I like a blue word with a yellow sentence, so that's what I have chosen, but you can see you can pick whatever. If you're colorblind, you can choose underline. Uh, we normally have all these items on the left turned on. You can adjust your reading speed to your comfort level. Second language learners may want it slower to pick up the correct pronunciations. Whereas those going into um, information fast areas such as medical, fire, et cetera, anything like that where people are panicked when they're talking to you, they're gonna want it faster and learn how to listen at double time so that they have that soft skill. For text mode, you can choose what size font, what font itself, and what text background color you want. I've chosen the open dyslexic. And now I'm going to look at this page in text mode. And we can see this for the open dyslexic. We can play the entire page or I can choose a sentence. Let's see, I'm going to choose this last sentence right here to have played. There are now Quidditch teams across many colleges that have competitions as you would experience in college football, baseball, or basketball. And we heard that was much slower, and that's because I did slow it down some in my speed when I was demonstrating just a moment ago. 
If you don't like that, you can quickly change to another color combination on the fly anytime you're in one of these boxes. Another question was about the page mask, which is the electronic version of a sheet of paper with a hole in it. You can make that mask larger or smaller, and you can pull it along the page as you go. And you can use the bottom edge as a way of using a ruler. Um, did I miss any of the items? Um, Ginger, we had, I'm just trying to, and, and if you have like direct questions, just make sure you're using Q&A just so I don't miss it. Um, can, I, can I use this with students who are learning Spanish? The same students who have read aloud accommodations take Spanish. It's a requirement for graduation. Yes, if the work is written in Spanish, we do have Spanish voices that will read it correctly in the Spanish. In fact, our, our extension can be used on a Spanish web page to read, say, a Spanish newspaper. So that would help out in that area. If a student has an e-textbook or another document not in the LMS, can a student download a doc that needs to be read to them? Could you repeat that first part? Where is the document to begin with? Jackie, can you elaborate a little bit more on what you're saying? You said if a student has an e-textbook or another document not in the LMS, can a student download a doc that needs to be read to them? If, if the document is outside an LMS, it can be uploaded into TextAid and read there. I see a lot of questions coming up in Q&A about medical. We do have a lot of our medical words pre-programmed into our dictionaries. However, if you encounter a mispronounced word or a name or something along those lines, we can very easily program that into your dictionary. I would like to know if ebooks can be read as well. Depends on the format of the ebook. If it is an EPUB or a PDF that is a, an accessible PDF, then yes, they can be. And Jackie said um, when we were talking about the document that's not on the LMS, talking about it could be on a website or something from a group that they are working. And, and again, that's where the extension would come into play. Um, yes, uh, ReadSphere can be used on a tablet or smartphone as well, and um, you can actually have different settings for each device. Um, those are stored in your cookies and cache, so if you like to have, um, you know, I, I know that everybody would want the Southern Draw as a voice option, but I'm sorry, it's not available right now. But if you wanted a male voice used on your phone, but you wanted a female voice used on your um, desktop, or if you wanted, in, you know, um, different background colors or whatever, you can set those um, for each of your devices. And again, I just do want to mention, because I've seen a lot in chat, if you're requesting a sandbox environment, please make sure that you're emailing either me, kathy.wood at readspeaker.com or paul.stisser at readspeaker.com. I may have not caught all of those in chats. Just, just to be safe, please make sure you've emailed us. How does this work with math? Well, it works very well with math. Ginger, I didn't know if you had a chance just to show them it reading math. Um, and um, while we're talking about that, right now, um, I, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Kari or Carrie. Um, right now, we are not compatible with new quizzes in Canvas, um, and that um, is something we're working on. And Canvas actually has extended the use of original quizzes because a lot of the third-party vendors, a lot of these um, plugins or third-party vendors that um, work with Canvas and work with everything, aren't able to work with new quizzes because they aren't sharing those APIs necessary to make sure that everybody's working properly. And um, I think, Candice, you may have mentioned um, when we were working with CourseArc, um, you know, we actively um, reach out to a lot of these um, companies, especially the proctoring solutions. We wanted to make sure proactively that ReadSpeaker could work with these solutions. 
And so we are actively uh, pushing Canvas to release these APIs so that um, we can get working in new quizzes. And But it also takes you guys as um, Canvas users to also push them um, because right now they're holding those very close to us and it's not just affecting read speaker, it's affecting a lot of other um, integrations with Canvas. Um, and so, but yes, we are, we are, it is top of mind right now for our um, product team um, to make sure that, that we get that working. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes. All right, I'm just gonna read this little bit right here. And I like the British English on this, so I'm going to choose that. Let's read a few math and STEM equations and expressions. X minus two equals X plus 13. Whoa. The four root of two. Let me try American English there. Let's read a few math and STEM equations and expressions. The absolute value of the quantity x minus 2 equals x plus 13. The 4 root of 256 integral sub 0 to the 1 x dx. And it does read the chemical formula. Someone asked in one of these, can read speaker read Latesh? Yes, it can. We take Latesh and we also take uh, MathML and convert that over to MathJax. Um, one other thing that was asked somewhere along the line was about reading words on PDFs. First off, a PDF does have to be a readable PDF. It can't just be a large image. If it is, then we can answer it. And if I had small words like I do on this one, I can OCR words on images and have those read aloud as this is going to do here in just a second. Poo. Sorry, my Mac and I are not playing nice in the ballpark. And while that's going on, there was a couple of questions about the well, notes like on a the notes on a PDF. If you handwrite in notes on a PDF, can it read it? Those notes would have to be OCR'd and it is better to use typed notes than handwritten notes. And my extension is not behaving today. So I apologize for that. Um, Kathy, I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, I do. We, we've got a few other questions. And again, I'm just, I'm just going to keep repeating myself because I know that there's a lot going on and we, we've had a lot of people throwing questions. Just remember, please email myself or Paul if you want to in a sandbox environment. Um, yes, in terms of ExamSoft, Proctorio, uh, Respondents Lockdown Browser. Um, and um, we have been, um, and we do, I think, have a lot of um, videos on our video library on YouTube that shows um, our tools working with those. So if you're interested, um, you can shoot me an email and I'll send you a link to that. Um, also just make sure, you know, readspeaker.com backslash education. There's different pages for each different LMS that you can kind of see the tools in action in your particular LMS. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I've, I've hit, um, all the uh, the questions. Um, and I know we're going to email out the recording, so we could always include some yes. answers to additional questions or obviously additional links and uh, and such when we do that to everyone yep. who registered. So it's not even the people who attended, but everyone who registered. Yeah. And this is, I mean, again, we really appreciate the questions because I think, you know, we're, you don't you don't learn unless you ask. So um, 
the sandbox is free. Um, so, um, if you are interested in learning more and you want to see it, it, you know, it is free for you. If you want to test it out to see if this is something you're interested in. So yes. Um, Kathy, I'd like to say one thing about the sandboxes. It's not our materials that are being tested there. You are testing your materials in your environment. Can dictation feature of Read Speaker be used to create transcript during the presentation? I would say no, because it is a sentence by sentence transcription and you would have to be very fast on the button for that. And that would just be very cumbersome to do. All right. I I know that we have, wow, we used up the entire hour. Um, again, this has been so great, everyone. I really appreciate it. Um, Candace, Beatrice, thank you so much. Grace, Jim, Ginger, thank you for being, being here as well. Um, again, we're going to send out the recording. Jim, if you want to include the slide deck, we can include the slide deck. Um, everybody's information will be there to get in contact with you if you have follow-up questions. Um, we're here to help you make the best decisions for your learners. Um, and that's what we really wanted to help you um, achieve today. And Beatrice, Candice, y'all really rocked it today. I mean, the information you provided, like what better way to learn than from your peers? You guys are in the trenches every day you're dealing with the same things that all, I think at one point we had 594 participants, they're all going through it as well. And so um, as we're in these hybrid, these online, whatever we're in, even if we're still in brick and mortar, everybody needs these tools. And so I really do appreciate you guys, you know, being thought leaders for us today, providing your insights. Um, and hopefully we, we've, we've helped some people um, really understand about that good course design, that accessibility, and, and what it means for students and staff. So again, thank you everyone. Um, stay tuned for um, a follow-up, um, you know, uh, and again, email us and we'll be glad to uh, get you what you need. So happy, uh, it is Wednesday, happy Wednesday. Uh, look forward to the weekend and if you're getting snow, keep it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.